Hi there, my name is Amy and during this session I'll be walking you through how to set up the features that you've unlocked by subscribing to the automation add-on. Before we get stuck into features, I wanted to take a super quick minute to explain the benefits of automation and how this fits into your support offering. The features that you're about to see are aimed at streamlining your support processes and improving your customer experience. It's key to remember that we're not trying to remove the need for support agents altogether or replace all human interactions with bots across the board, but elevate the way your customers interact with your brand. Human interactions are good. They contribute to a positive support experience and we know firsthand that there's an enormous benefit in CX with a personal touch. We don't want to take that away. We just want to make it faster. Without automation, agents need to manually respond to all inquiries, including really simple things like, where is my order? In these cases, the clearest road to delighting your customer is to give them the right answer right away. There's less focus on personalization and a very strong focus on speed and accuracy. On the other end of the spectrum, in cases like a customer choosing between styles or needing uh, a hand with checking out if they're having difficulty there, having a personal response from an agent can make all the difference. The faster the response time and the more time they have to connect with your customer, the better the outcome which in most cases means a high CSAT score and possibly a sale. So by automating the simple requests, customers get their answers immediately and they get the right answers. And this leaves agents free to answer those complex inquiries faster and with more of a personal touch. So with that said, uh, let's run through our agenda and then get stuck in. On the agenda today, we'll be walking through self-service, quick response flows, order management flows, self-service in help center, managed rules, article recommendations, and self-service statistics. And these are the extra features that you've unlocked by subscribing to the automation add-on. To get started, let's take a look at self-service. Now self-service, uh, like I said before, sits in help center or in chat. If we had a look at enabling this, we'd go to settings, and then down to self-service. If you have multiple chat instances, perhaps for different regions or different brands or different Shopify stores, here is where we select the one that we want to edit today. So we'll be turning on Bakehouse Store, just change the toggle and away we go. Now, if we take a look at quick response flows, these allow you to have up to four custom frequently asked questions as buttons in self-service. then you can customize a response for each one when a customer clicks. This will instantly reply to the customer and immediately prompt them to confirm if their response was helpful or not. Let's take a look at this in action. So if we open our chat here, these are my quick answers or my quick response flows. To set these up, it's very straightforward. We click into the self-service that we wish to edit. And then here are my quick response flows. To edit these, give them a click. And then you can change the button label if you want to, and then write your message. Um, I'm going to go with our quick response there. So I'm telling customers that members get a discount. And then I've added a hyperlink here that links to um, an area where they can join. So this might be a page in the help center or a separate landing page. Then if I click save, we're ready to go with one. Let's do another one for shipping policy. Again, we give you some sample text that you can choose to use. For me, I want to use this one. Again, I've used rich text formatting and a hyperlink. You can also add images, emojis, and product links and all the fun stuff if you would like to. For me, this is more than enough. And then let's look at these from a customer standpoint. So if I clicked, what is your shipping policy? I get my quick response answer here with all the information that I need. And then a prompt if it was helpful. If I say yes, it closes the loop. Uh, gorgeous will wish the customer a very nice day and it doesn't create a ticket in your account. Let's try again if we were to say that we needed more help. I'm 
going to say I need more help and this will immediately create a ticket in Gorgeous uh, that has all the information so an agent can then pick up that conversation and carry on. Um, so that's quick response flows. Like I said before, you can have up to four of them enabled at any time, but you can create as many as you like. So to create a new one, simply click add flow, enter all the details and away you go. Now let's look at auto management flows. These are located right here. Auto management flows are sometimes called report issue reasons or custom chat flows. And the, they allow you to specify what options are available to a customer when they click report an issue, depending on their order status in Shopify. So let's take a look at what we have available. Here we have our generic ones for track, return and cancel. And then if we look at report issue, here we can see our custom order management flows. So if we looked at, let's say delivered, what this does is as a customer, I go to report an issue with an order, report issue. And then these are the options that are available to me based on my order status. So for me, my order has been delivered. So this is what I see. If we were to look at some of the other custom reasons, things like uh, payment issues. You'll notice that because my order doesn't meet this criteria, some of these aren't available to me. Um, and that's what the benefit of these uh, custom reasons are. So if we went to, maybe we wanted to create a new case. Let's look at something like shipping. You can add a description if you want to, and then choose the reasons that would be relevant to this one. There we go. So now that I've added my reasons, I now need to set the conditions. If we hover over here, we can see a little explanation. So we're going to choose a shipment status. Then I click save. And when a customer goes in to click report issue, if their order meets the criteria that we just set, these options will then be available to them. We do also have a list of custom reason templates uh, that I'll share with you. Uh, so that's also available to you as well. Moving on, looking at adding our self-service to help center. So let's take a look at one of the Bakehouse help centers here. We'll stay in settings and go to help center. I've got a few sample help centers here. Let's click on our first one and then preview what it looks like at present with no self-service. So adding self-service to help center gives customers the ability to perform self-service actions from within the help center without needing to open chat. To switch this on, let's go into our help center, then click self-service. We'll first need to connect a Shopify store if you haven't already. Here, we'll just select our relevant store from the dropdown and connect. Then go back up to self-service and we're enabled. If we take a look at our help center now, we can see all of the options that are available in chat and now available in our help center. So super easy to set that one up. Next on the agenda, let's look at managed rules. We're staying in the settings page and then we're going down to rules. This is my rule list. We'll go to the rule library and we can see our managed rules here. So managed rules are plug and play rules that are built and managed by the gorgeous team. So you don't need to set them up from scratch, but they can be customized to your business if you would like to. We currently have these two available auto close non-support emails and tracking information email, and there will be more coming soon. Let's start with auto close non-support emails. This rule uses machine learning to detect things like newsletters or auto notifications, all of the stuff that is not support related and we want to close immediately um, to reduce the noise for your support team. To switch this on, we've got our rule open 
here we can see the option to create a view to isolate these tickets if you want to. To install, just click install and away we go. This can be left as is or customized. So here we have an accept list and these are emails that you want to exclude from this rule. So even if Gorgeous detects that they're not support related, you want to keep them open anyway. And this might be something like notification at paypal.com. Let's go with that. Then on the flip side, we have our block list. And these are emails that will always be closed by this rule, regardless of if they're non-support related or if we detect that it's, it is support related. So this might be a notification at shopify.com. Let's go with that. So we've got our accept list that will be excluded and our block list where all emails from this sender will be included. Then we can update and away we go. Looking at our second option for tracking information email, this is uh, my personal favorite. This is answering all of your where is my order emails with a custom message that includes details about shipping. Previously, you may have had a rule set up to do this um, using a macro. This will replace that. So if you do have that rule enabled, um, go in, switch it off and replace it with this one. Similar to the auto close rule we just enabled, we can see the option to create a view if you want to. And then to install, we click install. Now we can customize again. So the exclusion email list are emails that will never be replied to by this rule. Um, you may choose to put yourself in there or uh, a particular customer or anything you wish. You can always update this later. Then here we have our message body and this is the reply that customers will get if this rule is triggered. We can see you can include all our favorite variables, things like the customer information or the agent information. Uh, and then our message, you've got rich text formatting, hyperlinks, images, emojis, all the stuff. This is the first part of our email. So this is up here where we see message body. The second part of our email will include all the tracking information pulled from Shopify, which we can see here. And then the third part of our email is our signature. Now here, I've just got a standard message. I've used the agent information here, but you can of course include customer information there if you want to. Now we'll click update and our rule is ready to go. Moving along to article recommendations. This is again, super easy to set up. So we'll start in the settings page then go to integrations, chat, and then select your chat if you have multiple chats. From here, we'll go to the automation tab and you'll see the article recommendation option. Just toggle this on. If you have multiple help centers, select the right one that you want to connect and then save changes. You'll be able to see a preview on the right hand side of the article recommendations, how it looks for customers and you're good to go. Just keep in mind that if you have a welcome campaign set up, customers that see the welcome campaign won't be able to view the article recommendations. Last but very not least, let's go through our statistics. So we go up to our main menu and then select statistics. Now there's not been a lot happening in my account, so don't be alarmed if these are a little light. Uh, let's go down to self-service under automations. I'm going to increase this to 90 days so we can have a little more information. Now this self-service page gives you detailed information about how customers are engaging with self-service. So the big ones that we can see here are our self-service distribution on help center. So we can see exactly what's happening in our help center. Report issue flows, where we can see the products that have the most reported issues. This can be super useful to quickly find any products that may have a manufacturing fault or suppliers that may have a delivery issue. So do take note of your products with most issues because it can be a really great way to see the red flags without having to dig too far. Next, we'll look at top issues reported. And these are simply the reasons that customers are reporting most on. Um, so very handy there. And then 
down the very bottom, our returns flow. And these are the products with the most return requests. Again, a really great way to see what your customers are liking or not liking. And if you see something in this list uh, with a large number, if, if most of your returns are coming from a certain product or from a certain supplier, then that can be a really good thing to trigger you to investigate. Going through our overview, we can see our self-service interactions via chat. And these are the number of self-service interactions sent by shoppers through your chat widget. And we can get their Delta data on the bottom there or Delta data, depending on where you're from. Um, and this gives us, if we're looking at say a 30 day period, this gives us the increase or decrease as a percentage based on the 30 days before. Same if you're looking at seven days, it'll be the increase or decrease based on seven days before. Next, let's look at our self-service interactions as a percentage of chat tickets. So this is the number of self-service interactions sent by shoppers from your chat widget divided by the total number of chat interactions you receive. So in my case, 86% um, of everything that comes through chat is through a self is through self-service, which is pretty good. I like that number. Next, we have our self-service interactions via help center. Pretty straightforward there and our automated interactions, which are the number of automated self-service interactions as a total. And these are those ones that don't uh, create a ticket. So if we have a look, remember all the way back to the beginning of this session, if we look at things like customers requesting our shipping policy, if they click yes, this is an example of an automated interaction where an agent hasn't needed to get involved. These are also commonly referred to as deflected tickets. Last but very not least, if we look at our automated interactions as a percentage of our total, these are the number of automated self-service interactions divided by the total number of self-service interactions. And that's across chat and help center. A really good indication to see how much you're getting out of self-service. Our very last point for statistics before we go is looking at our self-service flow distribution on chat. So here we can see our different days and then on these different days, how many of those interactions are based on different flows in chat. So if, for example, we look at April 15, one was a quick response, one was an automated tracking response or where is my order? And then one was a customer reporting an issue. Again, there's not a lot of data in my account, but it's a really great way to see exactly which parts of sales service your customers are engaging with the most. Well, that's it from me. I hope that gave you everything you need to get stuck into the automation add-on and start providing a better customer experience. If you do need a hand, our support team is only an email or a chat message away. If you're basic and pro, you also have access to office hours. And if you're advanced or enterprise, do get in touch with your CSM to help set up anything that you've seen today because they're more than happy to help. Uh, thank you so much again for joining me. It's been a pleasure and I hope to see you in the next webinar.